Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Columbia Business School Executive Education. My name is Jason Belland, and I'll be your host for today's webinar, The Power of the Leadership Credo. Coming to you today uh, live from our, our offices here in New York City. And before we begin, I just want to thank all of you for being with us today. We have a truly global audience uh, with us today, and that includes many members of the Columbia Business School alumni community, past participants of our executive programs, and uh, a number of folks who are uh, currently uh, following us uh, in, our, in our LinkedIn group. And before we begin the session, let me just uh, invite you to access the chat window, which you'll see on the right-hand side of your, of your screen. The session, much like our in-person sessions, is really about you and what you can uh, take from the content and uh, interacting with the, with the faculty. And we want to encourage you to use the chat box on the right to ask questions, uh, make comments throughout the event. I will be monitoring that window throughout the event and we'll uh, be happy to pass along your questions and comments to Bruce Craven as we, uh, as we continue throughout our time together this afternoon. And now let me introduce Bruce Craven. He's the uh, director of the Columbia Senior Executive Program, our flagship program here at uh, the Business School Executive Education. And he also teaches in, uh, in our MBA program here at the Business School. Bruce, thank you so much for agreeing to spend some time with us this afternoon. Thanks, Jason. Um, I want to welcome everyone from around the world for joining us for a little discussion here on the power of the leadership credo. Uh, it's appropriate that we have an audience from around the world because CSEP is very much uh, a global program. We call it CSEP. That's the acronym for the Columbia Senior Executive Program. When I started working in the program uh, many, many years ago, uh, I was immediately kind of engaged and excited by the cultural diversity of the program. It was something that struck me as very unique. Um, I started sort of in the ground up and worked up to co-running the program with faculty director Paul Ingram. I can say to you that one of the elements of the program that really consistently is a rich resource is this diversity. Um, we draw from all around the world. All of these people make a commitment to join the program for a month. They leave their families. They leave their organizations. In many cases, they leave their countries and they travel to the New York, Connecticut area to go into this sort of intensive deep dive uh, around leadership and management development. And of course, they cover a wide range of the sorts of subject matter you would expect in that kind of program. Um, what I think surprises many people is the element of personal development that goes in sync with the traditional uh, business education. Um, I interview everyone before they come to the program, so I have the opportunity to talk to everyone around the world as they're gearing up to join us, and I have a sense of the expectations they have, uh, the excitement they have to some level, the trepidation they have about the commitment, and I can speak from experience to say that the month goes incredibly fast. Um, on the opening Sunday, you have these people from all around the world uh, who are essentially strangers to each other. And very quickly within that first week, through a combination of traditional business lectures, uh, visceral kind of uh, working together on all these different exciting projects, people get very close. And they learn to trust each other. They learn to share. They learn to be comfortably and productively critical with each other. And essentially, this safe environment is, is created. And the reason I say that is that the leadership credo is essentially a, a leadership message that each participant in CSEP creates. Now, they draw on all the learning from those four weeks. So the credo itself is essentially three questions, and you answer those questions. It's, it's if you will, imagine kind of it as a, a structure or a format for creating a talk that you'll give that presents to any constituent, whether it's your direct reports, your peers, uh, outside people, the press, other organizations, customers, it presents what you stand for, what the organization stands for, what your goals are, and how you attempt to, how you plan on achieving those goals. Um, it's one thing to create it. Anyone can pretty much answer those three questions. It's another thing to answer those questions in the very intense environment that CSEP creates, an environment where every day people are learning new things. They, you'll all have a learning journal, which you will keep, and you'll capture 
specific, unique, individual ideas in that journal. So at the end of the month, each journal will be completely different. And as each journal is different, based on the unique challenges faced by each executive in the program, so will each credo be different. And the credos are presented at the very end of the program. Uh, you will have each individual works in a learning group. So this learning group, in addition to the large community of learning that's built with all the participants in the program, there's a small subgroup where you work very closely through the month. At the end of the program, each individual will present their credo to their learning group. So a special sort of empathy and trust and, and uh, collegiality has been built in that group. And you'll present your credo. Your colleagues will offer you some advice. They'll coach you on it. They'll critique you on it in a productive way. Um, and then a representative from each learning group will go out and present their credo to the whole class. So th the reason I'm taking you to sort of envision this is that on the first day of the program, you have essentially a group of strangers. At the end of the program, you have this, this community that's been built, and you have executives from all around the world, numerous industries, numerous cultures, you know, numerous individual leadership styles, who all get up and they present their credos. And it's a very evocative, powerful moment in the program uh, more importantly, from what I hear with people who I coach maybe six months, eight months down the road, it's very important for each executive because they have an opportunity in this safe environment to formulate and capture and shape what they really stand for as a leader. And when they go back to their organizations, then the real world sort of closes around them and they have the confidence of this message to both guide people that are looking to them for leadership and also uh, to guide themselves. People talk to me after the program very much about CSEP as being transformational. Um, and I think what they're getting at is that there's this significant change in understanding yourself, understanding your relationship to your work, and understanding your capacity to positively impact the world that you're engaged with professionally. And I think where, that, where the credo fits into that is the credo is really stepping forward and saying, I believe. Credo uh, is Latin for I believe. You could call this the leadership message. Um, it would be certainly appropriate. We like the word credo because there's a certain evocativeness to it. And it's this standing in front of people and committing to what you represent that is a critical tool in every leadership, uh, in every leader's kit, because people are going to choose to follow you. People are going to listen to you. Um, you may give them a directive. That's all well and good. But at a certain point, they're going to listen to you. They're going to evaluate you. And they're going to decide if, in fact, they trust you and they choose to follow you. And that's exactly the point of the leadership credo. So essentially, here's what it is. Here are the three questions in front of you. Sometimes we have people that like to move the questions around in a different order, but fundamentally this is the order that you follow when you deliver a credo. And to give you a little more context, if you're an executive, say, from a Swiss organization and you're at CSEP and you're standing in, up in front of your learning organization, your learning group, I'm sorry, which has people from Hong Kong and the U.S. and Nigeria and New Zealand, whatever countries might be there, different organizations, you will say to your group, okay, here's the audience I'm talking to. I'm talking to my immediate team of direct reports. We have a particular uh, change management initiative we need to, to drive, and they're looking to me, and they have a lot of questions about it, and everyone's not on board. Or you, you'll give the audience some context for your credo. Then what you'll do is you'll talk, as you would to your team when you get back home, about what you stand for uh, as a leader. Now, it's easy, for example, one of my values, um, all the participants in the program have been coached on values. So at this point in the program, the fourth week, they have maybe three or four words which capture core values which they believe uh, drive them. And they're, they're often abstract words. So you might have a word like integrity or truth, commitment or justice. And they're these words that people feel sort of encapsulate many of the different things that are important to them. So one of my values is empowerment. I, I believe in empowering people that I work with. Now, if I were to get up and give my credo and say, 
what I stand for as a leader is empowerment, well, no one's going to argue with me, but it's not particularly the most impactful way to get the message across. I'm simply making a statement. I'm not showing how I learned why empowerment is important. Now, in fact, if I get up and I have a story that expresses uh, a moment in time where I learned the importance of empowerment or I learned the importance of integrity or I learned the importance of accountability, that allows my direct reports, my customers, my boss, my peers, whoever's listening, to evaluate and actually kind of take in the fact that I learned this, okay? So the initial part of the credo is, what do I stand for as a leader? Then you link it to what your goal is for the team and how you're going to achieve, achieve that goal. Now, one of the words that resonates with me, and it comes up a lot in CSEP, is this idea of, of being authentic or authenticity. And where that comes into play with the credo is we're not – encouraging or asking or expecting people from all these diverse cultures to step into the East Coast to an Ivy League university and put on some kind of mask and present themselves in some preconceived notion of what a leader is. We're asking people to find a very authentic, natural way to talk about what's important to them, a way that they would go back and present to people in their organization, whether they work in Thailand, Japan, Australia, England, wherever, wherever they might be operating. I think why authenticity is something that comes up so much in executive education in the world of business is because people know it's, they recognize it when they see it, and they know it's not always a given. So if someone can be, have integrity, they can be dependable, they can be accountable, that's a quality that matters in a leader. Um, if you can have your feet on the ground. Uh, we don't ask people at CSEP when they're creating their credo to try to be someone else, we ask them and we work with them and we draw on sessions throughout the program to help them to be themselves, just to be themselves with more awareness and more ability to impact others and get their leadership message across. A, a metaphor that I like uh, that I think captures some of this around authenticity is uh, Bill George, who, who teaches at Harvard, wrote a book on authenticity and another book called True North. And he talked about the idea that if you can envision your life as a house, so maybe the living room is the social function of your friends and that sort of thing. Maybe the kitchen is the domestic part of your immediate family. Maybe there's uh, an area where you play sports or a rec room. Maybe there's an office where you work. That's the professional part of your life. If you can move through the different rooms of your house and essentially be the same person, be able to access the same ideas, use the same language, and not have to shift and adjust radically, then you have a certain element of authenticity which comes across to people that, that meet you in a professional environment. People, you know, there's a, there's a transparency to you that people find engaging and trustworthy. And the credo, the credo drives this. Now, I was, one of the things we do in the credo, of course, is this idea of having a story. So a story that can be used to show other people where you learned something. Now, you may draw an experience from a colleague who you saw once who inspired you. Very often you may draw an experience where uh, a mentor, you know, a, a leader, maybe a coach when you were younger, someone sort of showed you the right way and you, you try to live up to the values exemplified by that person. You may also look back at your own life and realize that there were times where you stumbled or times where you faced adversity, um, and you can draw on that. An exercise, if, if you look at the screen in front of you, this, this rather playful uh, drawing represents an exercise we do called the lifeline. And each participant will take a big piece of flip chart paper, and they'll start at the bottom with the year they were born, and they'll draw a line, and they'll put all the you know, relatively significant events in their life, when they were married, who they're married to, what school they went to, first child, big job, um, and then they'll put other events in, maybe an adventure they had, a hobby they developed, uh, a journey they went on, uh, you know, maybe they'll put in some things where they struggled, maybe some moments where things didn't turn out quite right, maybe a moment where they overcame great odds. And we'll have all of the participants in CSEP 
create these and then share them. You know, two people will share with each other, and maybe then three people will share their lifeline. A couple things happen. One thing is that people start to realize the richness of wisdom and experience in the room. So maybe 30 to 50 executives from around the world. There's been a lot of experiences. So people start to realize that that's something that they can draw on through the month. In relationship to the credo, what happens is that you often look back and you realize that your life has had many, many um, moments that maybe you've pushed aside or you've forgotten about, moments where you were inspired by someone, moments where you overcame adversity, moments where you failed, you know. And you can look through the lifeline and draw from that stories that can be used in your credo in terms of uh, explaining to people how you learn something. Um, and also it gives you uh, an awareness maybe of skills in the past that you've dropped. Maybe there isn't something you started to do when you were young that you don't do anymore, and you realize if you go and explore that, that could be a professional asset going forward in your career. So the lifeline uh, is one of many things that happen during CSEP that allows you to draw forth knowledge um, about experiences you've had that have shaped you as a leader and helped you become the person you are. Now, you know, struggle is something that most of us don't want to face for obvious reasons. We don't like it. It's much easier when things go smoothly. Yet often struggle is really where we're tested. It's where we become uh, the people that we are in an admirable way. Uh, it's where our values sort of are shaped and formed. And often sharing those stories with other people really gives people a sense of who we are. Okay, it gives people a sense of the integrity uh, that we're grounded in, the values we're grounded in, and it helps them learn, learn to trust us. So when I gave my credo at CSEP, I had three values out of, I think, four or five that came from my coaching. They were serenity, empowering, energizing. Now, I chose to weave those all into my credo. Many people might use one, one value in their credo. There's no real hard, firm rules about it. I use an example of my involvement with the Columbia Senior Executive Program after 9-11. Now, as you can see, the credo that I finally created exists at present on three index cards with bullet points. Now, initially, I wrote it all out. I typed out maybe five or six pages to sort of try to capture the information. But we asked people then to distill it down into these bullet points on a card because we asked people when they present it to their group at CSEP, we don't want people reading the script. We don't want people looking up and sort of looking back down and maybe having lost where they were on a particular sentence and struggling. We want people to take ownership of what they're saying. It's, it's that truthfulness, that veracity of taking ownership that's far more important than the specific words. And we encourage people to understand, look, if you tell your credo five times to five different groups and it's slightly different each of those five times, that's perfectly valid. What's important is your sense of owning the message you're trying to get. So in my case, uh, who am I? I talked about uh, arriving in New York City the day of September 10th, um, going out for a run, feeling rather sorry for myself. I was feeling plateaued at my job. I wasn't feeling particularly inspired. Um, I came back, showered. I was late for work, kind of went walking down and started to realize something was wrong and, and came to the realization um, when a security guard at the Columbia Business School told me about 9-11 that this terrible tragedy had struck. I instantly started thinking about my work with Columbia, and one of my values is serenity. So I achieved this serenity. You could use different words for it. I chose the word serenity. I achieved that through working very hard uh, in a, for an intense period of time to try to achieve something of value. So I realized after 9-11, in fact, when CSEP looked like it was not going to run that year, that I would not be able to achieve this value of serenity, and I felt particularly inspired to go and drive and try to make the program happen. Anyway, I won't walk you through the whole thing, but within these three bullet point cards is, you know, a 12, 12 to maybe 15-minute talk, depending on how I present it, where I get across to my team at CSEP, look, this is the contract between us. This is what I expect. This is why it's important. This is what we're going to do. We're going to deliver a specific kind of program to executives from all around the world who are making the commitment to join us. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to model the behavior. 
we're going to be open to learning, we're going to take risks, we're going to test our assumptions, and also this is what I'm offering back to you. I'm going to be empowering you through this project because at one point in my life, I felt very plateaued, I did not feel empowered, I know what it's like to be on the wrong side of that arrangement, and I'm committed to offering empowerment to you, my team. So my credo is essentially a contract between me and my team about what we're going to achieve. Um, I remember a few years back walking down Broadway with a number of people in the CSEP program and Mohammed, uh, a Saudi, was asking me about it. And I sort of described the process. We hadn't got into a formal introduction yet. And he looked up at me with this sort of, you know, interested, engaged look. And he said, well, the credo is proactive. And it's always struck me that this is really the value of, of this exercise, is in the safety of CSEP, you create this document, or I mean, sorry, this, this talk that's available for when the unknown hits you. Um, it's really all about taking people with you. Um, there's no firm rules how you do it. We encourage everyone to do it in a unique way. But to take people with you, they have to choose to follow you. So you have to be able to stand up in front of people and say, here's what I stand for. Here's what I'm asking you to do. Do you choose to follow me? Um, many years back, when we initially started using the credo, we had a woman who was with the U.S. Postal Service, and she um, said, look, this isn't my kind of thing. I'm not an extroverted leader. I'm a very quiet person. I work for the Postal Service. I just do my job. You know, I, I get rewarded for doing what I do. I'm not a leader. So we worked through the credo anyway, just so she would have it. She went back home, and her boss said, look, I'm going to transfer you from Ohio down to Mississippi. I want you to relax. There's a promotion coming soon. Um, you know, but just take some easy days down in Mississippi. It's an easy job. It's nice weather. Enjoy yourself. And so she went down, and, and as you can tell from looking at the slide, what happens but the Katrina hurricane hits, and the whole area is decimated, and she's suddenly thrust into this position of, you know, following her values, which is that postal service work matters, and she wants to be the right person, the right leader in a time of crisis, and she pulled her credo out of her, her hip pocket, essentially, and started using it in terms of communicating with the press, communicating with people in our organization, communicating with relief organizations, communicating with everyone. She said, look, this is what we stand for. This is our values. This is why we're important. This is what we're trying to do under crisis. And she was instrumental in restoring the normal post office operations as well as leading search and account operations for nearly 750 employees, uh, establishing support, counseling. I mean, she really was there when she was needed. Um, she won a governmental award for that. And we have a number of these kinds of examples. Now, more often what it is is it's people going back and, and just managing the kind of conflicts and challenges that come up over, you know, your normal time at work. I spoke with a guy yesterday who was in our last CSEP, Australian with the Financial Services Organization in Melbourne, and he said really the credo, you know, helps him remember his core values and express them in a very coherent way. And since CSEP wrapped, you know, two months back, he's been able to use it informally on one-on-one -on -one talks with people in his organization that he had some conflict with, and they've been able to, to find resolution. So... Uh, I'm going to touch on this just very quickly, but there's a, a reading from Robert Quinn entering the fundamental state of leadership, and he talks about this idea of moving from being kind of in a comfort zone, if you look at the top, the top box where you shift from remaining in your comfort zone, to moving toward possibilities that don't exist. And the credo is very much about that. It's very much about saying, look, am I results-centered? Do I want to make something happen? If I want to make something happen, I've captured those ideas to myself here, and I'm now going to go out and I'm going to use this one-on-one -on -one with my direct reports. I'm going to use it with my boss. I'm going to use it with customers. I'm going to keep this message front and center both to guide me and to guide the people that I need to lead to achieve what we need to achieve. There's a number of sessions here that throughout CSEP are drawn on uh, in developing the credo. We have actors come in and work with you on sort of using your body as an instrument, uh, there's, there's a number of different sessions that, that play into this. But I think probably the most important thing is you've built this great community at the program and you take the responsibility for saying, hey, this is what I stand for and this is important and I'm going to go out and use this message to motivate others to achieve what we need to achieve. Bruce, I think, I think this is a great time for uh, a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Uh, sure, yeah, thanks. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, 
This is a really great stuff, and uh, it's really um, you know amazing that as you're talking about uh, other folks uh, putting together their credo and thinking about the personal stories that you've also shared your own uh, personal lifeline and some stories with us uh, as well. Um, I want to ask you how you might respond to folks who are thinking about this idea of authenticity and thinking about how in some cases it might be sort of at odds with succeeding in a corporate culture. How, yeah. how do you respond to that? Yeah, well, I think if, uh, you know, if I'm understanding the question right, I mean, you, authenticity to me does not mean continually expounding your opinions and being perpetually transparent in an unproductive way. I mean, in, in a corporate organization, there's obviously a lot going on in terms of different people's stances and different people's agendas. Um, I think authenticity is more understanding what you're accountable for, what you stand for, and, and being comfortable in expressing that appropriately as you pursue your goals. Uh, nice. So it's not, it's not about a confessional <laughs> right. sharing of your opinion so much as it's about being – uh, being reliable, you know, having your feet on the ground with people, being this, you know, being a person that can walk in the room even when you're under pressure and yet not project that pressure and that anxiety onto everyone else around you. Um, and great. the credo is, is an instrument of that because the credo, you know, for, for example, my credo, serenity, energizing, and empowerment, if I stay focused on those three values and I'm having a rough day and I walk in the office, um, I can help lead myself to not project my anxiety out on other people, but to remember that my job is to energize the people that I work with at CSEP, my immediate team, the hotel staff, the faculty, um, energize the customers, the participants that make the commitment to fly into the program. You know, so it's, it's around helping guide yourself to be the best person you can be. And, and I don't think that's always easy. You know, I think that's why it's important. That's wonderful. You know, that really uh, emphasizes the great, the ROI of the uh, of the credo. And uh, I guess to add further emphasis, uh, I'm very excited to to say that we have a. Um, I just learned that we have a, a past uh, Columbia Senior Executive Program attendee participant um, from the session right after 9/11 in the audience with us here. And her name is Doris, and she just uh, sent me a message, and I just wanted to read that to you because she has a, she has a question as well. So, uh, okay. first, Doris, thank you for being with us today, and um, it's great that you're with us uh, over 10 years later, continuing to stay connected. And she says, I attended CSEP right after 9/11, and creating she said creating the leadership credo changed my life and provided me with a framework to deal with difficult situations. Um, it's a tremendously powerful method for navigating yourself. Uh, your organization through turbulent times. And her question to you is, what is the next step after the leadership credo? Mm, that's a great question, Doris. Um, well, I, as she probably knows, I'm also a writer. Um, and I do think I, there's a, a business case that's been written at Columbia by Bill Klepper and Yoshi Tomizumi um, that's going to be uh, available at a certain point. And one of the things they talk about is the importance of writing in self-discovery, in, in sort of getting an understanding of the environment around you and being prepared for the unpredictable. Uh, and, and I'm not sure I have an immediate answer for Doris, and, and it's actually such a good question. It's going to get me thinking about maybe some ways to answer it in a more fulfilling, substantial way down the road. But I do think the act of, of writing and thinking reflectively about the world that you've been engaged in is something that you can pursue um, in terms of trying to come to more understanding about the world you're in, basically, and, and anchoring yourself more firmly uh, in what's important to you so that when crisis rears its head, you're prepared for it. And I will say that, that this comes up all the time. I mean, people come go back after CSEP and six months later, the world that they are in professionally, for any number of reasons, is radically different from the world that they were in when they joined CSEP. And the credo is one of the things that often comes up as uh, a way of guiding them, uh, an instrument that they use to try to navigate the unpredictable uh, environment that they're in. 
Bruce, this is great. Thank you so much. And uh, I just want to, we have uh, one uh, last question we can get to. Um, folks are, are wondering, you know, they're interested in the, the credo and they want to know, um, you know, beyond, of course, attending the Columbia Senior Executive Program, are there any resources or uh, books that you might suggest if folks are just interested in exploring this a little bit more on their own? Yeah, well, I, there is going to be this. There is going to be this case that will come out. That will be made available soon uh, on the Columbia Caseworks. That comes to mind. Um, there are a number of good books on the power of story um, in in uh, in the professional world. There's. I, I wonder if there's a way I can kind of get a list and put it up somewhere where people can can check it after after this uh, webinar. Is that something that's possible, Jason? Yeah, that's a great idea. Actually, we'll we'll email uh, a, a, a note to folks uh, along with the recording of the of the session, so we can we can include that um, yeah. as part of I that have, I have an office great. that's basically stacked with books that, <laughs> could, that could relate to this. So rather than try to throw off a couple, I'd, I'd like to maybe put together a nice list for people if they're interested. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for that uh, generous offer. And, uh, you know, actually, we're at the end of our 30 minutes uh, together. So um, I do want to thank you, Bruce, for, for all the great uh, thoughts that you've given us today. And a big thank you to everyone who's been in the room with us. You know, we had some alumni of the business school, some folks uh, actually who attended CSEP, a uh, number of folks who are just connecting with us for the first time. So it's, it's a great a group of executives, um, and it's uh, great to have you all here. So thank, thanks again, Bruce, for taking the time to, to lead us through this today. Well, I want to thank you for setting it up, uh, and I want to really want to thank everyone for joining because it's been uh, a real pleasure for me. So hope to see you guys down the road. Yes, thanks Thanks again and uh, for, for attending. And I definitely, if you're not already in our group on LinkedIn, I definitely invite you to, to join us there. We have a number of conversations happening there. Um, we really encourage you to post your thoughts and ideas and get involved with a, a group of executives that are part of that network. And I uh, hope to see you again soon, either at an upcoming Columbia uh, Executive Education Program uh, or, of course, at a, another online event. Thanks again. Take care, and I wish you all the best uh, th through the holiday season and a happy 2013. Thank you.